Hey everyone, back with you to talk about breathing. We're gonna talk about breathing, but I answer two burning questions about breathing. One, why is it so important? And two, do you need to work on it? So question number one, why is breathing so important? Why is working on breathing so important? Do you know the average person actually breathes 20,000 times a day? 20,000 times a day, that's a lot of breaths in one day. Something that you do that often and that regularly, it's very important to do it well. We all agree that oxygen is one of our primary fuel sources, we need it for, to function for life. Um, if we're not, if we don't know, we, we take that for granted. So we take it for granted that breathing, we, we do it all day long, we're still alive, so we must be good at it. But we don't understand is that over the course of life, breathing patterns change. So if we get injured, get sick, stress, all those things will actually change the way you breathe. If you don't actually look at it and actually fit, change the, the patterns, you may be breathing actually in a less optimal pattern, not getting as much oxygen as you need to. So in general, it's very important to make sure you have good breathing function just for health and for life. So how do you know if you need to work on it? So I'm gonna give you two, two ways to actually figure this out. So one, we look at your, at your mechanics. So the easiest way to actually tell if you need to work on breathing is actually look at your own breathing patterns. So use your, you wanna use your selfie phone camera or you wanna use a mirror. What you wanna do is we call it high-low breathing test. You wanna put one hand on your upper chest, one hand on the bottom of your, of your rib cage, right above your, where your diaphragm would sit. You're gonna take some nice, slow, deep breaths. So watch me first, we're gonna breathe in. Nice, slow, deep breaths. What I wanna look for is find out which hands are actually moving the most or moving first. A normal, good breathing pattern breath should be my bottom hand moves first and it gives me a full inhale. And comes back in with minimal movement in my top hand. If you see anything like where you're getting both hands to, get, to move or just your upper hand is what's moving first, you're breathing for mostly with your upper chest, which means you're probably getting about one third of the total oxygen capacity you could be getting if you used your entire lung, entire rib cage. So if you're using your bottom, bottom hand first, being the hair, you're actually gonna get two thirds more, more oxygen. So if you think about that over the course of a day, over, over the course of 20,000 breaths, if you're missing two thirds of your lung capacity every 20,000 breaths, you're missing an opportunity for a lot of oxygen the course of the day. So number two, if that's hard to tell with the mechanics and you may or may not have good mechanics, number two way to tell is we do a kind of a general screening questionnaire. So we're going to attach on this, to this video a link for, uh, to a, a questionnaire called the Nymogen Questionnaire. The Nymogen Questionnaire came out as a good way to, it's about 15 questions, and it's been used around the world now as a way to actually screen for whether or not a person has respiratory issues or needs to actually work on breathing, their, their breathing. It looks for a state we would call it chronic hyperventilation, which means you breathe too much or too often or too hard for what you're actually doing. So we're going to give you a link for that. The questionnaire is very simple, it's 15 questions, uh, answered honestly, it takes about two or three minutes to do, and at the end, look at your score. If you score over 23, it's an indicative that you may have some kind of respiration problem and you need to work on your breathing. So it's a very easy way to actually find, do I have some issues, can I actually be better? So what else people find that they had the chronic hyperventilation, they tend to have colder hands, um, they tend to yawn a lot, they have energy issues, uh, kind of feel anxious or have, to have some anxiety issues sometimes. Uh, they have pains, pains that come and go or they migrate around the body, they have to be in the hip one day, the shoulder the other day, or in the back one day. Migrating pains, pains that come and go, all those things are indicative of possible breathing problems. So real quick, it should take you more than, no more than five minutes, check in on your breathing. You do it a lot, all day long, every day, so make sure you're good at it. So one, high-low, make sure you're using the right mechanics, low hand first, to breathe in and out. As you're standing here, sitting here, relax, this hand should not be moving much at all because you're not in a stressed state where you have to breathe hard. So it's low, low breathing. Can you, can you do that? Or if you can do that, is it hard or is it easy for you to do? And number two, fill out the questionnaire. Give yourself like an honest score. And if you have a higher score, 23 or higher, give us a call, contact somebody to actually help, help you work on your breathing. You notice it's gonna make a huge difference in, in how you feel, stress levels, energy, pain levels, even how you perform in your daily life and in sports. So check yourself out and then take action. We'll see you soon.